Hi, I'm Ian Coxhead from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I'm Sandy Siegel, president of ME Day and Company. And this is Talking Trade. Well, hi, Sandy. Good to see you again this week. Uh, now, as you know, the, uh, the new NAFTA, the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, uh, came into force in July of this year. And a lot of people are asking, well, just how different is this from the old NAFTA? And uh, probably you're hearing a lot from the companies that you work with about, uh, about those differences. What can you tell us about that? And how is that new agreement helping us here in the Midwest? Well, you're right. You know, it started in July of this year, officially um, the new agreement. So, you know, it's a little early to see how, um, you know, what the benefits are and, and see some results. Um, in general, I can say that the, the new USMCA is not dramatically different from NAFTA for all the attention it got in, in politics and otherwise. Um, there are some encouraging wins for the US um, that got some attention and for us here in the Midwest that you know, we're all hopeful about. In particular, Canada opened up its uh, dairy markets where there were previously some restrictions on certain types of dairy product, milk and, and whatnot. So that opened up the market for you know, Midwest farmers. So that's you know, encouraging. Again, I think a little bit early to, to know, um, you know what the results of that will be. Um, certainly any wins, you know, Wisconsin, it, our biggest uh, export markets are Canada and Mexico. So it, it's something we wanna pay a lot of attention to and, and you know, hope that we'll see some results here, here in the Midwest. Right. So we've heard a lot of positive responses from the uh, Wisconsin dairy sector in particular. And I guess that is one of the big wins in this agreement. But there's also been some dissenting voices, I guess, or some critics. Uh, one of them, I guess, is, uh, is uh, Joe Glauber, who used to be the chief economist at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And his take on the new NAFTA, he says, well, it's just like what was going to be obtained in the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which... Uh, uh, had been negotiated before. He says, just like that, but less benefits and with fewer countries. So what do you think about that? Well, you know, I, what, what I'm most concerned about is we, we made certain agreements, you know, in the trade agreement, and, and then there's these side trade issues going on. So one of the agreements that Canada um, asked for was that the U.S. drop additional tariffs we were imposing on aluminum that was coming from Canada. Um, it's something we call the Section 232 on steel and aluminum that got a lot of attention um, in the last year or two. So we did drop that as part of negotiating um, the USMCA um, and Canada was excluded. So that went into effect in July. As early as September, we decided that um, the aluminum imports exceeded uh, the anticipated volume and the U.S. trade rep imposed the duties again effective in September. Um, that um, the Canada wasn't too happy about that, needless to say, and Canada um, said they would retaliate with a, dish, a list of goods um, on U.S. imports into Canada um, because of that um, dollar for dollar. So the day before their list came out, uh, the U.S. trade rep rescinded and dropped the additional duties and said that the volume was no longer a threat. So it's very interesting how some of these side negotiations happen. Um, we've left the door open, however, to impose that again. So, you know, again, I, I worry about some of these contradictory things. Um, the other thing that's been um, and might be some of the agriculture issues. Um, there's a lot of disputes amongst fresh produce growers, um, and that's between Mexico and the U.S. Um, we compete really strongly with the Mexican farmers. Um, we have the same fresh produce season, and Mexico uh, government subsidizes Mexican farmers. So that makes obviously their goods a little more competitive. So that's another issue um, and a lot of dispute and not in agreement amongst US farmers because West Coast farmers apparently invest in Mexico farms yeah. and us in the Midwest and the East Coast compete. So some very interesting 
other political issues, and that's all, you know, aside from the U.S. MCA agreement. So, um, it, you know, um, I, I think we need to wait and see ultimately the benefits. Um, again, I, I, I think personally, I feel strongly that, you know, with um, being all part of North America, we have to unite and find our, our common ground to be able to compete globally. And, you know, there's some just like Europe has and other regions. And I think, you know, in the long term, there's a lot of benefits if, if we can, you know, put our, our side arguments um, aside, if you will. Right. I think everybody agrees on that, that a unified economic area is more efficient and uh, ultimately better off than one in, that uh, is divided by borders. But really quick take, Sandy, on this. Uh, uh, as you've just pointed out, this kind of bilateral or in this case trilateral agreement doesn't have a really good dispute resolution mechanism. So then you get tariffs and counter tariffs and retaliation. Wouldn't we be better off just working in an international framework where the architecture for dispute resolution is already there? Um, I, well, I personally would agree with that. I think to a great extent that what's what the World Trade Organization is for and, you know, where they often come in as arbitrators. So, um, you know, I, again, I think much of that has to do with, you know, particular administrations that use tariffs and, you know, trade agreements as, you know, um, ammunition, if you will, bargaining chips, you know, for other agendas. Well, let's see how, uh, how the USMCA responds to tests that come up in the future. It'll be a fun thing to watch. I agree. I look forward to talking about it again in a few months. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Andy. This has been Talking Trade. Great. Thanks, Ian. Good to see you.